Welcome to the Cho Wan River, people. The land of the cypress trees, or the river of the cypress trees. This is a really, really beautiful spot we have here. Cypress trees everywhere, all along this road. See the Spanish moss. Really good, uh, really good views of the cypress knees. Break a fishing rod. There we go. So we have traveled out to the Chowan River in eastern North Carolina. It's one of the larger rivers in North Carolina. This place is beautiful. We're near uh, Edenton, North Carolina. never kayaked out here before. We used to fish out here when I was younger. Never been on a kayak, so this is, uh, never been on a kayak out here. So this is quite the experience to get this close to all of these cypress trees. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a wonderful day. Another hot one. But this is beautiful. So we're going to paddle through and uh, go check it out. Now, obviously, we're looking for places to camp. And uh, just the little paddling that we've done so far, it looks like the best places to camp would be uh, actually in a hammock in the trees, between the trees. Leave the boats tied up beneath us. Because in that shoreline there, that is a... Uh, that is a thick, mangled mess. If you're trying to run from somebody, that's the place to go. Do a little fishing today. But right now we're just kind of taking it all in. This is uh, a <laughs> this is all inspiring. This is a beautiful, beautiful area. This is a wonderful river. All kinds of wildlife, ospreys, cormorants. All I mean. Just, all sorts of wildlife here. That osprey has a fish. I hope that it shows up on camera. That is so neat. I'm a big fan of the Spanish moths. I love Spanish moths. Really need to kind of decorate around the house with. It's the kind of stuff you usually see people put in their... Uh, pots for the plants, the indoor plants. Oh, look at those. Hard to tell from this distance, but they look like cormorants. There's a huge osprey nest up there. I hope I can get that osprey.
Gabriel picked up a new paddle for his kayak. He seems to be pretty pleased with it. It's a Carlisle, if I'm not mistaken. What's the uh, brand name of your paddle? Carlisle. Carlisle, I thought so. It's called the Carlisle Magic Angler. And guys, I gotta say, these are some of the neatest trees I think I've ever seen. <laughs> these cypress trees are something to behold. These are, uh, these are neat. So we've been having a good day out here, guys. Just paddling around. Really just taking it all in. It's just a, it's a hot day. But uh, Dad's got his umbrella up. I'm about to get mine set up here in just a second. But uh, just having a great day, guys. Paddle's working out great compared to the 210 centimeter Atwood paddle I was using. This thing is awesome. This is a 240. Now, uh, I was looking for a 250. But a 240 works great for this 30 inch wide boat. It, uh, it does everything I need it, needs it to do. So if I eventually get a wider boat, then I think I'm gonna move up to a 250 or a 260. But uh, this 240 works great. You doing okay? That's right. Oh. Definitely a big upgrade to what I have. I hated that other paddle. <laughs> it was so short, every time you bring it up out of the water, water would run down the paddle and it wouldn't take it any time at all before it's, you know, get all over your legs. Yeah. So it really wouldn't have worked out for winter time. But uh, this thing, it'll get you going too. So, big fan of that. We're gonna paddle around the point there and see what we can see. It's neat how these cypress trees are their own little islands. Cypress knees down there. Yeah, but they provide wonderful shade out here. My goodness gracious. This sun is something else today. Look at that view. It's a big old river. Okay, for all you knot fans out here, look at this thing. Something was uh, anchored to it, and this is a huge chunk of cordage. Get closer to it, and I'll pick it up with my hand, or, or put my hand beside it for a uh, scale. That is neat right here. Oh, gosh, that is a big chunk of rope. That is so cool. Not sure what was more to it, but that's been here a while. Okay, we are paddling up to uh, Edenton, North Carolina's waterfront. Should be there in a few more minutes. This is a really, really neat place. A lot of history down here. Historical sites. This is just a really neat place. Okay, we're a little closer to the lighthouse, but we have an issue. There's a system coming in. Right 
now the wind is blowing us uh, in the shore. But we're starting to hear thunder and it's coming from this direction here. So I think once we get up to the uh, lighthouse, we're probably going to have to pull the kayaks out. Seek some shelter for a little while. We've had a good paddle behind us. I'm, uh, it's probably a good 10 miles one way. We thought we were going to beat the, uh, we thought we were going to beat this weather. And so far we have. It's still behind us, but, uh, this has been something. This is a really neat place. Well, maybe this is going to blow over, blow around us, paddle back. I'm going to check the weather station first. It's a neat look inside there. Okay, we finally made it to the 1886 Roanoke River Lighthouse. This is really neat. Uh, years back, I was uh, present when they first moved this down here. This has been relocated from its original position to or location to where it is now, here in Edenton. They were screwed into the river. Yeah, how about it. that? All right, folks, this last segment, or this segment, I'm going to film uh, here. I had to stop a second to uh, film, but 
We're all the time hearing survival situations. You know, what if you were in a survival situation? What would you do in a survival situation? I have some, uh, I have some advice for you. Don't get into a survival situation. We had the option to paddle back into the storm front. We're taking about four, minimum four hours. It took us four hours to paddle one way. Or I could run five miles to the truck and uh, pick Gabriel back up. You have to use good judgment, folks. Best way to get out of a survival situation is to never get into one. It would have been stupid. It have been bad judgment as a person, horrible decision as a father to try and paddle back in the storm front on a kayak. So, five miles, 45 minutes, I'm almost there. So I made it back to the truck. On the way to get Gabriel now. My feet are on fire. Crocs are not worth running five steps in. I just ran five miles. So, uh, hey, but I did make pretty good time. 47 minutes total, uh, five miles. So, and that's in Crocs. Boy, better be glad I love it. Alrighty folks, thank you for watching this video today. I had to kind of cut it short since we got caught in a storm there. Uh, it was really neat to see some of the things that, you know, that I've heard about, but, you know, never seen, like the Roanoke River Lighthouse. Things like that were really neat. Seeing some of those cypress trees, just how they just come right up out of the water. You know, no, you know, immediate land right, by, right beside them or around them. They just kind of come up. It's really cool, you know, to see those. Just had an all-around great time, guys. Of course, uh, like I just mentioned, we had to cut it short because the storm came up on us. I took shelter while Dad went back and got the truck. Uh, but, you know, of course, you've seen some of the footage. So I did wander around a little bit, you know, to, to capture some of the footage. But uh, shortly after that, got back down, hunkered down, stayed out of the storm. But uh, we just had a great time, guys. So thank you for joining us today on this video. And as always, may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. And God bless.